Hi, this is Sonia Doucette. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate delta G under non-standard conditions of pressure and concentration, and then to use that delta G value to determine the net reaction direction. For this problem, you're asked to calculate delta G for the reaction shown there at 25 degrees Celsius if the concentrations of reactants and products our partial pressure of ammonia gas at 0.15 atmospheres, partial pressure of CO2 gas at 0.25 atmospheres, and the concentration of NH2, CONH2 as 0 0.20 molar. Based on the calculated delta G, what is the net reaction direction? So first to calculate delta G. And the relationship you can use to calculate delta G is delta G under non-standard conditions of pressure and concentration being equal to delta G naught, which is the free energy change under standard state conditions, plus RT ln Q. R being the ideal gas constant, T being the temperature in kelvins, and Q being the reaction quotient. So there, are, you have to find or make conversions with all of these terms before you can actually solve this problem. So let's start with delta G naught. There are two main ways you can find delta G naught. You can use the equation that delta G naught is equal to the sum of the standard free energies of formation for all of the products involved minus the sum of the standard free energies of formation for all of the reactants involved. So you could look up the standard free energies of formation in a table and add and subtract to find your delta G naught. Another thing you can do is use this relationship that delta G naught is equal to delta H naught plus T delta S naught. So what you'd have to do to use this equation is to find delta H naught and delta S naught. So delta H naught would be equal to the sum of the standard free enthalpies of formation of the products minus the sum of the standard free enthalpies of formation for the reactants. And you could look up those standard free enthalpy change values in a table. Similarly, you can find delta S naught by taking the sum of the standard molar enthropies of the products minus the sum of the standard molar enthalpies of the reactants. So I'm not going to actually calculate delta G here, but these are the two ways that you can do it. And let's just say for this problem that you know that delta G naught is equal to negative 13.6. So you'd either be given this value in kilojoules or you would have calculated it using one of those two methods I just explained. So you have your delta G naught value. Another big term you need here is the reaction quotient Q. So the reaction quotient is just like the equilibrium constant, except it is the concentration of products over reactants at any given time that is not necessarily equilibrium. And when you're dealing with the reaction quotient here, for reactions that contain both gases and solutes, which you have here, you have two gases as your reactants and then you have a solute as your product and if you remember pure liquids and pure solids such as water here are not included in the reaction quotient. So as I was saying in cases where you have both gases and solutes present the gases will be in units of atmospheres so you'll be dealing with the partial pressures of those gases and you're given those partial pressures here and then you'll be dealing with units of molarity for any solutes. So here you have one solute in aqueous form. So products of a reactants, Q is equal to 
the concentration of your product, which is NH2CONH2, divided by the product of the partial pressures of the reactants, which in this case will be the partial pressure of ammonia gas, and that will be squared because the stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced chemical equation for ammonia gas is 2. And you multiply that by the partial pressure of CO2 gas. So you're given all of these as part of the problem. So all you have to do is substitute them in. So you have 0 0.20 divided by 0.15 squared multiplied by 0.25. So when you do the math there, what you'll get for your Q value of your reaction quotient is 35.556. So you have your delta G naught, you have your Q value, you also need the R, uh, the ideal gas constant, and the temperature. So the ideal gas constant is normally given as 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. Your delta G naught value is in kilojoules. So I'm going to convert the R value from joules per Kelvin mole to kilojoules per Kelvin mole simply by multiplying by the conversion factor. In one kilojoule, you have 1,000 joules. And what you'll get there is 0 0.008314 kilojoules per Kelvin mole. What you could also do here, though, is you could leave your ideal gas constant in joules per Kelvin mole, and you could convert your delta G naught value to joules. But either way, they have to be in the same units. And then the last thing you need to do here is you're given this value of 25 degrees Celsius as the temperature at which this reaction is occurring, but you have to convert that to Kelvins in order to use it in your equation for finding delta G under non-standard conditions of pressure and concentration. So the temperature in kelvins is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So when you add 25 degrees Celsius to 273.15, you get 298.15 kelvins. What you do next, now that you have all your terms, is you substitute them in to this equation that we started with. So you'll have delta G is equal to negative 13.6 kilojoules, that's your delta G naught, plus 0 0.008314 kilojoules per Kelvin mole, so there's your R value, multiplied by 298.18 kelvins, so there's your temperature, and then you're going to take the natural log of your Q value, or your reaction quotient, which is 35.556. So if you do the math here, what you're going to end up with for your delta G value is negative 4.7 kilojoules per mole. So there is your delta G value. The next thing you want to do is think about some rules of thumb that you know in order to figure out what is your net reaction direction based on the delta G value under non-standard conditions that you just calculated. So two important rules here are that if delta G under non-standard conditions is less than zero, then the reaction proceeds spontaneously in the forward direction. Another rule is that if delta G is greater than zero, the reaction will re proceed spontaneously in the reverse direction. So in this case, you have a delta G value of less than zero. You have a negative value. So what that tells you about the net reaction direction 
is that the reaction will proceed spontaneously in the forward direction and therefore more products will be formed in this case. And that's it. You've answered your question. You found delta G under non-standard conditions and then you've told what the net reaction direction would be based on that delta G value that you calculated.